report. Uh, today we have uh, an exciting session ahead of us. The speakers are Matthew Guest, Navina Latis, Peter Abiel, and Martha White. And we'll have a discussion afterwards at uh, 11.30 Pacific time uh, on optimization hosted by Gregory Noy. Um, with that further ado, let's get started with uh, Navina. And uh, uh, looking forward to your talk, Navina. So I'll let you start sharing your slides. OK. Thanks for uh, organizing. Um, okay. Oops. I advanced a few slides when I was testing. Um, so, uh, oops, sorry. Um, yes. The title of my talk is going to be Adaptive Approximate Policy Iteration. Um, this is joint work with uh, Bota Ho, Yasin Abbasi Yadkari, uh, Puyo Jelani, and Chaba Sepeshwari. Um, the setting is going to be learning in uh, Markov decision processes with uh, observed states X, discrete actions A, uh, unknown reward function R, and unknown dynamics. Um, pi will denote a stochastic policy. Uh, Q pi will denote uh, the action value of policy pi. And uh, we will be in the infinite horizon undiscounted setting um, where the goal is to find a policy that uh, maximizes the average uh, reward. Um, and we will assume that the MDP is also ergodic so that everything is uh, well defined. And uh, the learning protocol will be online single trajectory learning uh, where we compare algorithms in terms of uh, their regret, um, where the regret here is defined as the difference between the average reward of the optimal policy um, and the rewards accumulated by the algorithm. Um, so <clears throat> in terms of uh, related work on this topic, uh, there are a lot of um, RL algorithms out there with sublinear regret guarantees. Uh, but most of them either require a finite state action space, so a tabular MDP, or a finite horizon, or both. Um, and this is with the exception of some uh, recent results on infinite horizon uh, linear MDPs. So in this talk, um, I'll focus on the infinite horizon case, where the state space is also very large, um, possibly infinite, so we have to use uh, function approximation. I'll describe two algorithms for this setting, which achieve sublinear regret, um, called Polytex and AAPI. Um, and both are kind of versions of approximate policy iteration, where you regularize each policy to the previous um, policy in terms of KL uh, divergence. And so the main difference is just that the, in AAPI, uh, the, this regularization is kind of going to be adaptive. Um, so it's probably best to first describe the vanilla version of approximate policy iteration. Um, it basically alternates between a policy evaluation stage and a policy improvement stage. In the policy evaluation stage, you execute the current policy for some number of steps and estimate its Q function. And in the policy improvement stage, uh, you set the next policy to be greedy with respect to that uh, Q function estimate. And so if these Q functions are exact, there's no error. Uh, this is guaranteed to converge to the optimal policy. But with function, function approximation, this um, tends to work poorly in practice, and it's not even uh, guaranteed to converge. Um, and so Polytex is a version of approximate policy iteration, which uh, modifies the policy improvement step. So instead of being greedy with respect to the most recent Q function estimate, we also add to the objective the KL divergence um, to the previous to the policy of the previous iteration, and so I guess superficially this kind of also looks like some popular algorithms like TRPO, except TRPO reverses the KL divergence and uses a constraint. But really, um, for us, the motivation for this update comes from online learning, and so this can be seen as uh, running mirror descent in each state x where the loss functions, um, or the reward functions, I guess, to the mirror descent algorithm um, are the Q functions, Q hat of X in each um, iteration. And so um, this argmax can also be computed in um, exact form. 
And what you end up getting is a Boltzmann policy over the sum of all the previous uh, Q functions. Um, and AAPI is uh, also a similar algorithm. And the main difference is that uh, instead of mirror descent, um, we update the policy using a different online learning algorithm. So instead of mirror descent in each state, we use um, adaptive optimistic FDRL. Um, and basically, um, the idea behind uh, these optimistic um, mirror descent versions is that the reward functions that you uh, that you keep receiving are not um, adversarial, but instead you have some side information at each um, iteration, which is predictive of the next uh, reward function. And so, um, when we apply this to uh, policy iteration, our reward functions are Q functions, and so like because the policies are changing slowly because of the KL regularization. Uh, the corresponding Q functions of these policies are also kind of changing slowly. And so we can use the current Q function um, to predict the next one. And uh, when you plug that stuff into the AO FTRL update rule, um, you get a policy that's kind of similar to Polydex, um, but a little bit different. So the differences are here, I guess, highlighted in purple. Um, it's again a Boltzmann policy over the sum of all previous Q function estimates, but um, we are double counting the most recent uh, Q function estimate. And also the Boltzmann temperature is kind of adaptive. Um, so it's a function of the current state um, and also of all the previous Q function estimates. And basically like if all the previous Q functions, if the consecutive ones actually um, agree um, in, in the current state X, then this policy is a little bit more uh, greedy in state X. And if the consecutive um, Q functions uh, disagree a lot in a state X, then the policy ends up being a bit more stochastic. Um, so in terms of the regret guarantees, uh, what we can show is that if these Q function estimates are good in some sense, um, then the regret of Polydex scales as t to the 3 fourths and of AAPI as t to the 2 thirds, where the main difference is due to the different um, online learning algorithm. And the thing that we require the Q function estimates to satisfy is uh, when we estimate the Q function from tau uh, samples, the error scales as 1 over square root tau. And this error is weighted in the stationary state action distribution of the optimal policy. Um, and so you might wonder when this, uh, this uh, assumption on Q function error hold. Um, we can show that it holds at least in some cases. Um, for example, in linear ergodic MDPs, where all the Q functions are linear in some known features, if we also assume that um, all the policies produced by the algorithm span the feature space, so no policy just lives in a subspace of the features, um, and we estimate the weights using the LSP algorithm, um, then this error assumption is going to hold. Um, but um, I guess effectively these assumptions on ergodicity and feature excitation kind of circumvent the need to um, explore. So. In more general environments, which are less stochastic, I think one would also need to um, do some exploration to get a good estimate of each uh, Q function. Um, so in terms of the way that uh, the analysis works, it's based on um, this uh, paper called Online MDPs by Evandar, Kakade, and Mansour which, uh, as far as I know, was the first one to propose doing reinforcement learning by running online learning in each state. Um, and so their setting was a bit different uh, in that they assumed a tabular MDP with uh, known dynamics and um, adversarial reward functions, but a lot of the analysis still applies. Um, and basically what we do is uh, we, we first uh, add and subtract the average uh, the average reward of each intermediate policy, j pi k, um, and dec decompose the regret that way. So then in the top equation on the right, 
the second term is just a difference between the true average reward and the empirical average um, of each policy. So that's not too difficult to bound. And for the first term, uh, this uh, J star minus J pi K, um, we rewrite it using the performance difference lemma. And then what we get is this difference of Q functions evaluated at the optimal policy minus Q functions um, evaluated at the intermediate policies. And so this last term, if you look at it, um, it kind of looks like uh, the regret of an online learning algorithm whose reward functions are Q pi K. And so for that part, we can just use the regret of mirror descent or, or uh, optimistic mirror descent. And we also have to take into account the policy uh, evaluation error. So that's basically how it works. Um, some limitations of this approach are that, uh, as I mentioned before, um, we don't do any explicit uh, exploration. So this is more about just like opti optimization. Um, we circumvent this using the ergodicity assumption and feature excitation, um, but um, I guess a more general algorithm would also do exploration and account for that in the regret. Um, another uh, direction for improvement is improving the regret dependence on T. Um, so our regret uh, bound scales scale as uh, t to the three fourths and two thirds, but the known lower bound, at least for the tabular case, is uh, square root t. Um, and so some ways to improve uh, uh, the bounds are, for example, uh, instead of estimating each q function using the tau on policy samples, uh, we could try to use all the previous samples, either using some sort of OPE or uh, a model. And um, I guess that if we could uh, show a better finite sample uh, error bound for the uh, evaluation error, um, then we could also improve the regret. Um, another uh, limitation or direction for future work is improving constants. So I guess I didn't discuss this on the, on the previous slide, but um, in terms of the content, constants multiplying, uh, multiplying the, the t term, um, Polytex does not depend on the number of states. Uh, like in the linear case, it will just depend on the number of features. But when we analyze AAPI, we do get a term which can potentially be as big as the size of the state space. I think this is not a fundamental problem, but more like our algebra problem. So this is something that needs to be improved in the analysis. Um, and the final uh, direction for future work is uh, memory efficient uh, implementation. Um, so if you look at the, all these algorithms as I've described them, if you implement them with neural networks, they can be uh, pretty memory inefficient uh, because each policy is a sum of, um, is Boltzmann over the sum of all past Q, Q function estimates. And so if you uh, estimate each, each Q function using a neural network, you kind of have to store the parameters of all these past neural networks in memory. Um, and, um, and also the policy becomes pretty slow because you have to evaluate all those uh, uh, neural networks at each step. And similarly for the Boltzmann temperature. Um, so there are some ways of getting around this. You could subsample the Q functions. Um, you could do distillation, so approximate the sum with a single network. Um, and the third option is to parameterize the policy and then uh, minimize the minimize the objective with respect to the policy parameters. So this is uh, another direction for us for um, uh, future work, basically uh, doing this in a memory efficient way and then incorporating the optimization error into the regret. Um, so finally, I'll just show some um, experiments. Uh, so this first uh, set of experiments are on a simple tabular ergodic MDP where we can just implement everything exactly and this environment is uh, very stochastic so we don't really need to do much exploration. Um, and uh, the different plots just correspond to different number of states and actions. Uh, so here I just compared Polytex um, AAPI and another algorithm called RLSVI, uh, which basically randomizes uh, value function parameters. And so here it seems like this uh, 
um, adaptive uh, regularization uh, does help uh, API converge uh, faster than Polytex. Um, here are some other experiments in a, in a I guess, slightly different uh, environment, which is not stochastic at all. Actually, the dynamics are deterministic, um, and it does require a little bit of exploration. So here, this um, diver starts in the top uh, left corner, and he can go either down and to the left and receive a reward of zero, or down and to the right and receive a reward of minus one, but kind of has to he keep swimming to the right to get the treasure. And in the Infinite Horizon version, we just kind of wrap the, um, the y-axis. Uh, so he keeps swimming around. Um, in this case, we tried uh, linear value function approximation, where the feature vectors just have the xy coordinates um, of the swimmer. And, um, and we didn't really do anything about the exploration. We just sort of, uh, for larger goods, we just made the phase lens longer. So the initial uh, policies have some chance of, um, of seeing the, uh, the treasure. Um, and here again, like it seemed like, um, even though the assumptions don't hold and actually we implement, implemented the, the Boltzmann temperature sort of approximately by subsampling the value functions, um, AAPI is still uh, converged a bit faster than Polytex. Um, but on card poll, we saw slightly negative results. So here, I guess like the, the standard deviations do overlap a little bit. This is, uh, um, I guess, averaged over 50 different runs. But uh, in card poll, um, API was a little bit worse than Polytex. We're not quite sure why, but maybe in the case where sort of um, the observations uh, change smoothly, this um, adaptive first state learning rate doesn't really help too much. Um, and that's the end of my talk. Uh, so any questions? All right. Fantastic, Navina. Thank you so much. Uh, we are actually uh, quite on time, so there's plenty of time for questions and possibly also for uh, trying to make sure that Matthew's uh, microphone works. Uh, Matthew, did you have a question? Uh, I'm trying to make my uh, So I missed the talk, unfortunately. But can you hear me? We can hear you. So that's, uh, yeah. so that's a good question. Uh, thank you, Matthew. So uh, all right. Uh, well, let me open up the floor then to, uh, to other questions. So I actually do have a question. Uh, Naden, I really like this idea of uh, using optimistic updates in this mirror descent uh, uh, steps that you're using. But I'm just wondering if it actually helps the optimization procedure or dealing with the, with the estimation errors or where exactly does the improvement manifest itself? Um... Yeah, I think uh, so for the evaluation error, we just use uh, the same evaluation procedure um, for both uh, Polytex and AAPI. I think it just helps with the optimization. Um, yeah, uh, so I guess regarding that, my second question would be that if you would have like perfect evaluation, like perfect Q functions and everything, do you think that uh, this optimistic trick would actually like uh, improve the convergence guarantees for standard mirror descent, or maybe even improve over the standard uh, policy iteration guarantee? Um, yeah, I think so. I, I mean, uh, we are using the optimistic version because um, I guess the regret uh, just for the online learning algorithm is better, so it's supposed to converge faster. Um, yeah, but if you had perfect perfect Q functions, I guess you could just use uh, regular greedy policy iteration. Um, whenever I've tried that, like that converged faster than mirror descent or this. So if with perfect Q functions, I guess you could just be like really greedy. Um, but um, I guess with some error, um, this does seem to help converge faster. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. I was just particularly wondering if you could get like a, a geometric rate uh, for the evaluation error for this update. 
or um, you, you yeah. go down at the rate of like one over t. But yeah, I guess this is a rather fine question. Really open ended. Yeah, we just uh, have one over t, but. All right, that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a follow-up question to that. Um, that's really interesting. That was, that was helpful for understanding more where the win is coming in. So you're saying if you had perfect action values, like your Q hat K was perfect, then you, should, you shouldn't you should use this sum of action values into the past like as a Boltzmann distribution, but you should just act greedily according to those Q. That's what you're saying, right? Uh, I, I mean, yeah, like the greedy policy situation with perfect Q functions um, is guaranteed to converge to the optimal policy. Um, I don't know how fast it is, actually, um, but um, I guess you don't have this need to damp to the previous policies. Wonderful. Okay, and I had actually a question about the experiments, too. There, those, those experiments are very nice. They were nuanced. They kind of told us where it fails, where it does well. I was curious about one of the plots, um, not this one, the one right before. You had, there was, yeah, in deep C, n is equal to 15. There's sort of this part where it gets worse. It's maybe one of the runs is is getting really bad or something. Do you know what's happening in n is equal to 15 there? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, the, that is the case. Like one of the runs is just starting to go to the left as opposed to uh, going to the right. I think like this is a little bit of a tricky environment when you wrap the axis. Like in the episodic version, all you have to do is like keep going to the right. But if you wrap the y axis, uh, the optimal policy will go to the right initially and then go left, right, left, right, left, right, just staying close to the right edge. Um, so uh, maybe some of the policies are starting to drift more to the left. Uh, this is like my guess on what's going on um, uh, in deep sea. OK, I do have one more question. Maybe others have questions. Actually, I can see there's other questions. I'll wait. Go ahead, Martha, while, while we have you on the call. OK, sounds good. Um, so so this, this point about improving the optimization when we have action values that have errors in them, um, I think you sort of highlighted that there's nothing specific about exploration that you're doing here. Uh, but yeah. is, the, is this averaging over past action values then using this Boltzmann distribution actually also giving you some exploration that's helping improve performance, or do you think that has no impact? Um, I think... Um... I don't think it's giving us exploration because basically like over time, the Boltzmann policy is just getting more greedy. Uh, I think it's maybe help with, helping with the Q function error. Like if you think of each Q function as some sort of like a noisy ranking of actions, uh, then when you like average those noisy rankings, like maybe you get a better like action ranking. ranking. Uh, so it might be helping with the error. Well, like in terms of exploration, I think, um, yeah, it's just getting more greedy over time. Um, I think like the API rule, like it's a little bit like kind of interesting that, um, where is it? Um, um, yeah, so this adaptive Boltzmann temperature, it's kind of weird. Like if all your Q functions agree on a state, then it makes the policy more greedy. And if they disagree, they, it, they make the policy more stochastic at a particular state. So that kind of looks a little bit more exploratory than just using the same uh, Boltzmann temperature. But like from a theoretical like standpoint, we can't really say much about this and explore, exploring the state space. OK, great. Thanks. There is a question in the chat. Um, Maybe if there are no direct questions uh, from the panelists, I'll take, I'll, I'll bring that up. Um, the question is from Sharon Vaswani, and it is, when Polytech's API fail, do you have a sense of whether it is because of a stochastic optimization problem? So the problem with the step size or because of a lack of exploration? I think Martha uh, asked some of this, but maybe you can reiterate the point and, uh, and answer. Um. I think it's mostly because of the um, lack of exploration and so, sort of like the Q function error, this is my sense. Uh, fantastic. Um, Gerga, you had a point you wanted to make. Oh, no, not quite. I'm just hoping that, uh, that Maciej is going to be able to talk about this. I was just saying that averaging past Q values actually provably helps in mitigating the effects of, uh, of evaluation errors. Much have some cool papers about this, but but yeah, he's gonna go into that hopefully. I actually have a question about this. Um, 
with regards to, and maybe Mitsu, you can tell me I'm wrong or, or right, but uh, Navina, the, the algorithm as you've presented them here, to me as a practitioner seem incredibly conservative. The fact that you're, uh, you know, you, you're, you're so dependent and such a long history of old uh, policies. Um, now, online learning algorithms are typically designed to be conservative because of adversarial constraints, but there's no adversarial constraints here. So is there something we can do better if we know the world is, is friendly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, like on one extreme, you just have regular policy iteration, which I guess would just maybe give you a Boltzmann policy with respect to the most recent Q function, right? If you just regularize with entropy. And this is like looking at the sum of all the past Q functions. I, I think like may, maybe something in between is um, like just keeping a buffer of the most recent one or subsample uh, some of the past Q functions just sort of to prevent um, standard policy iteration from um, oscillating, basically make it make it converge and slow it down a little bit, but maybe not look at the whole history. Um, I wonder actually uh, in online learning, there's this technique called switching or, uh, you know, fixed charity used to be called. That was actually exactly designed for if your environment changes quickly, you can sort of catch up on it. I don't know, I don't know if that's been looked at at all, but that could be, could be quite neat. Um, yeah, I guess here we're just uh, assuming that everything is uh, the same or like the environment doesn't change, uh, though the distribution of state the state action pairs do change because of different policies. Fantastic. Yeah, but it's interesting. Yeah. Um, we have time for one more question, Matthew. I think you were going to chime in. So if you would like to chime in. Uh, yes, I was just about to say that averaging is good. And even if you have all past functions, the thing is that uh, you will have, um, it's a true average in the sense that uh, I will talk about a bit about this uh, later, but uh, assume that uh, you have a trust region method like in TRPO where you say, I, I don't want my policy to be too far from the previous one, we will come back about divergence. What you do implicitly is that you use this kind of technique. You you consider all past functions because this is inside the produce policy. So it makes sense. And even if uh, it doesn't slow down, I'll show it later. Sorry, I didn't really understand the, the last part, uh, I, but I understood the, the comment about TRPO. I'll just stop. The thing is that, um, so I unfortunately missed the talk, but uh, if you take Polytex, you can see Polytex as a kind of follow the regularized leader, right? But follow the regularized leader, you can see it as a kind of mirror descent. And mirror descent is basically, I just want, uh, I want my policy to be not too greedy. I just want my policy to be uh, close to the previous one. And when you do optimization, it's the same thing. You do a linearization of the function and you say, I want to optimize this linearization by not moving too far from my current estimate. But this current estimate, it implicitly uh, account for all past previous estimates. So it's what I'm saying. It's not uh, that conservative uh, because if you say, I don't want to move too far from where I am, where you are depends on where you were before and before and before and before. So it's just a different writing of the same idea. Okay, thank you, Navina. This is great, fantastic work. Um, without further ado, I think we're gonna try, Mathieu. Uh, there's two things we need to do. First of all, Mathieu, if you can uh, exactly, as 